Following Wednesday's ruling, which overturned California's ban on gay marriage, a host of right-wing advocacy groups have come out attacking not just the ruling, but the judge personally, because he is gay. Never mind that Judge Vaughn Walker years ago established his credentials as a conservative, even a libertarian jurist, or that he was nominated twice by President George H.W. Bush after Democrats, including then-Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, blocked his nomination by President Reagan, claiming that Walker would be hostile to gays from the bench, because as a lawyer, he had brought a suit against the Gay Olympics for copyright infringement, and he put a lien on the home of their leader while he was dying of AIDS. No, because George Walker uh, agreed with the arguments of lawyers, including President George W. Bush's former Solicitor General, Ted Olson, his ruling citing over and over the decisions of Justice Anthony Kennedy, also in support of gay rights, anti-gay religious groups are claiming Vaughn, for those reasons, was biased in his ruling because he's gay, leading to the question, what sexual orientation would render one impartial about marriage? Tony Perkins' Family Research Council says, quote, the judge behind Proposition 8's undoing was just biding his time until he could unleash his ultimate agenda, decimating marriages that have defined civilization since the beginning of time. Ted Wildman of the American Family Association on his website directing people to pressure Congress to impeach Judge Walker. Quote, his situation is no different than a judge who owns a porn studio being asked to rule on an anti-pornography statute. How open and overt has the Republican Party's anti-gay agenda become? This is Nathan Deal, former Republican congressman from Georgia. He's trying to become governor there. On Tuesday, he has a runoff for the Republican nomination against former Secretary of State Karen Handel, who is so conservative she just won the endorsement of Sarah Palin. But that's not anti-gay enough for Mr. Deal. He put out this new ad blasting his conservative Republican rival for not being anti-gay enough. The last straw. For some, it's Karen Handel's support of taxpayer-funded gay partner benefits. For others, the last straw is Karen Handel's vote to give our tax dollars to Youth Pride, a group that promotes homosexuality among teenagers as young as 13. But for all, the lies Karen Handel tells about Nathan Deal, a veteran, former prosecutor, and judge, to hide what she's done are the last straw. We'll leave the grammar to somebody else. Let's bring in MSNBC political analyst Eugene Robinson, also associate editor, excuse me, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist of the Washington Post. Gene, thanks for your time tonight. Evening, Keith. Sharon Angle won't tell us whether she supports removing adopted kids from families headed by gay, gay couples. Does that help her in any conceivable way? Is there a group out there looking to do that? You know, I, I've, I've been thinking of what sort of group that would be. Maybe if somewhere in Nevada there's a club for historical reenactors of the Salem witch trials, mm -hmm. maybe that's the sort of group that she ought to go go to looking for an endorsement. But beyond that, I, I, I find it hard to imagine, and maybe it's just my failure of imagination, maybe mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the triumph of my hope over, uh, over imagination, that, but, but it's hard for me to fathom how this really helps her in this tight contest against uh, Harry Reid. Well, it, obviously you hope to get the support and the endorsement and whatever money there might be to it without having to get any of the crazies stick to you. I mean, all the candidates that got support from the PAC, and it's called Government is Not God, how do they avoid the extreme positions like, you know, taking adopted kids away from their parents without, without losing the anti-gay base or whatever that is? Well, if they were courageous, they would go to government is not God and explain what their title means, uh, and that, that there is a separation between church and state in uh, in this country, and that there is no state religion, and that the founders set it up that way uh, for very, very good reasons. Uh, and that's that's part of the fabric of this country. Uh, you know, barring that sort of courage, uh, I think uh, they they try to kind of. Um, mumble mouth their way through it and, and not address that question, for example, of retroactively doing some sort of Gestapo raids on the, on the families, uh, uh, same-sex families that, that happen to have adopted children, uh, and uh, hope no one pays attention. Uh, they would be called, um, they'd call themselves liberators under those circumstances, I think would be the term we've heard mm -hmm. before. Uh, the attacks on Judge Walker. There's there's a strong anti-American streak in the social right. Don't don't they get that even that, that it's the judge's job 
to overrule the majority when the majority is infringing upon the rights of the minorities and those literally are fill in the blanks it doesn't matter which the minority is today it might be gay parents and tomorrow it might be government is not god members Apparently that doesn't matter. Apparently, uh, and for all the historical references and allusions that the, that, the, that the Tea Party and that the social right in general likes to make, they're not aware that, that the, the founders specifically wanted separation of powers and, and it, that's why we have a Bill of Rights. It is to protect uh, the, the rights of, of the few over the, 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 you know, the, the proclivity of the mob, and uh, they would have been appalled at the idea mm -hmm. of, that, a, that a, a vote or a ref referendum or uh, uh, it could, could take away uh, what they consider fundamental rights of American citizens, and so they set up all these checks and balances, uh, but that's a flashing red light that the social right is often willing just to crash right mm -hmm. through uh, in pursuit of an agenda. And yeah, what about the, the standards of politics here, the strategy being once you won the primary primary attack back towards the middle. Why would the Sharon Angles of this world almost dare us to have a conversation now about this just when America is about to start paying attention, say nothing of, uh, of Nevada? Well, if, if if you thought this was calculation, you would you you would wonder, and you would say, "Boy, it's a it's a it's a wrong calculation." I I tend to doubt uh, that this is a calculated political move, some sort of a variation of the standard political strategy. It sounds to me more like a spasm, uh, just a, a a kind of reaction that that really wasn't thought through. That may reflect uh, her true beliefs, which is actually um, one of the more frightening. Uh, uh, possibilities uh, as we try to contemplate this whole thing, that she actually thinks, well, gee, maybe we really might want to confiscate the uh, children of same-sex couples. It's, uh, that's, to me, that is, uh, that is uh, an appalling commentary on, on where our politics uh, uh, finds itself in this country in 2010. I think God told her, but government, as we know, is not God. <laughs> So what, she, what, what he was saying to her was, don't mix them. Uh, MSNBC political analyst Gene Robinson of the Washington Post, as always. Have a great weekend, Gene. You too, Keith. Also with us tonight, Laura Flanders, host of Grit TV on the Dish Network's free speech channel and on grittv.org. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. We found one story, uh, study from 2007. 65,000 kids have been adopted by gay or lesbian parents. Uh, what are we talking about if we're talking about outlawing any more or perhaps even retroactively outlawing them? Well, what we're talking about, I mean, this is really where the hating hurts, you know, and it's not just those kids. It's also, there are something like half a million kids in foster homes mm -hmm. right now. I think what we're saying to them is, you know, we love you, but we love discrimination better. Mm -hmm. And what kind of message is that? I mean, they're going to look back years from now and say, with so much hurt in this country right now, we're going to take offense at the loving? This is craziness. Judge Walker noted, and there have been studies that suggest that there's no qualitative difference in, in upbringing or environment for children in gay homes versus straight homes. Is that is that a sort of accepted <laughs> science or yeah, what? I, I don't know whether she's been to the movies recently, but yeah. the kids really are all right. And yeah. if they don't want to believe Hollywood, they can believe the Child Welfare League, the uh, AMA. They can believe the Association of Pediatricians. I mean, it's kind of offensive, frankly, that we're being studied, gay and lesbian mm -hmm. people, for our ability to parent. Let's talk to the kids. Let's be sensible here. This is a question of, as the judge said yesterday, Judge Walker, as you said, he, it really makes you wonder. What he really said was, there is nothing inferior about gay and lesbian people. And it makes you wonder, what is the attachment to having, what do they think, that if you don't have a state-sanctioned superiority, you just won't mm -hmm. be able to compete in the world? Relax. You can handle it. Well, then there, that's the other thing. Perhaps you have some insight onto this praise that was used here by, uh, I guess this is from Mr. Uh, 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 Tony, what's his name's group. Um, uh, the judge, yeah, behind Proposition 8's undoing was just biding his time until he could unleash his ultimate agenda, decimating marriages that have defined civilization since the beginning of time. Once, it, How does a gay marriage... <laughs> decimate a straight marriage. Just, just he, he, one example. Well, it doesn't, straight marriage apparently doesn't need any help being decimated. It's really in trouble. And I think what we've got a problem with here is not, you know, the, pres the, the judge or his sexuality, which they're all worried about now, but his reality-based reasoning. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a guy that lives in the reality-based universe. And, well, we know that's problematic. What happens, uh, what happens now? What if the, with the economy or the anti-Obama sentiment 
leads to the actual election of people who are openly anti-gay. Well, you know, we've always had plenty of people in Congress who are openly anti-gay, and this is an issue gay equality that has never had serious leadership at the political level. It's a movement that has moved forward from the bottom up. Love will find a way. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how Barack Obama's parents got to get married. This movement, believe it or not, is being led in large part by the, pa the children of gay and lesbian couples who say, Get over yourselves, people. We, I think, are going to find a whole lot of politicians whose constituents, as well as their children, are just embarrassed by them. Laura Flanders of Grit TV, thanks for your insight. Uh, thanks for coming by. Have a good You're weekend. Welcome.